a vintage model steamboat, part 8, rubbing down the cellulose putty and refitting the brass parts and rudder. In the previous episode, a few days ago, I applied some cellulose putty to fill the imperfections in the hull. A couple of words about this cellulose putty stuff. It's very fine and will sand down to a good finish. But you cannot use it in place of the polyester filler because if you apply this stuff too thickly, as it dries, it contracts and cracks. But it's great stuff to use for the final skin before painting. In this clip, I'm starting the rubbing down process. I'm using 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper and plenty of water. This is the important part. You do not want the sandpaper to pick up any of the material and rub, because if that happens, you will get lots of scratches and grooves in the surface. From experience, when rubbing down things like this, I do use plenty of water and I wipe it off with a cloth frequently. The cloth takes away all the particles and then you start again with a new piece of sandpaper. You may have noticed that I positioned the hull on an old towel. This is to stop the other side being scratched on the bench. In this clip I'm wiping off the water and particle residue, including the particles that have got onto the varnish part, via my fingers. In the area where I'm about to point, it needs another layer of the cellulose stopper. But the rest of the surface of the hull is looking OK. Not perfect, just OK. Time now to refit the brass fittings. These are 100% handmade, and to get them like this there must have been quite a lot of filing. The problem is though, these parts are so handmade, each of the fittings will only go in one place. The holes are not the same in every one. I'm refixing them in place using the original brass pins, making sure that the hammer does not come into contact with the brass part, only the head of the brass pin. I don't tap in the pins all the way using the hammer. I finish the job off with a piece of brass. Some of these brass pins are longer than others, like this one, that's why it's taking longer to fit. The other one went in quite easily. In this clip I'm fitting the ones at the stern. You may be wondering what these are for because you can't tie a rope to them, but if you keep watching you'll see what they're for. Same principle, start with the hammer, then use a piece of brass bar to finish the job off. After fitting these parts, I check that they're firmly mounted to the hull, and they are indeed. As I'm working on this model boat, I do notice that it's very crudely made. There are quite a lot of rough bits, and not all the parts are put together properly, and it's a bit horrible really. But somehow it has a charm all of its own, just like a girlfriend that I once had. She had some horrible bits as well. But just like my girlfriend, nothing is perfect. And the more brass parts are fit to this boat, the better it's starting to look. I've cleaned up the brass parts, but I haven't gone mad. I had to clean them up really because they were actually black. This is after all a very old boat. Unfortunately though I cannot show you how bad it was in the first place because it's quite a few years since I received this boat to renovate. To be honest it was so bad I would have put it in the nearest dustbin. But now after a lot of work it's starting to look presentable and it has a proper steam plant. This is medium viscosity super glue that's because it says it on the bottle. I'm going to use some of this to attach the triangular part at the front of the boat. I've just put a spot of this underneath the brass piece. And once again, as with the rope guides, I'm pinning this part in position using the pins. In the middle of the deck, at the bow and the stern, there are these things. And I think the principle is, the fittings at the outer edge are the rope guides, and the ropes wrap round these stanchions. But the one at the stern end had a bit of a problem. This hole is too big for the screw, so with the help of a bit of cyanoacrylate adhesive, medium viscosity of course, I managed to fit the screw part into the deck. Now it's time to look at the rudder. This rudder when I first received the boat was very bent, so I straightened it out, and now I'm going to clean it, first of all on my polishing spindle, and finishing off the job with some Brasso. When I was a child in the 50s and 60s, Brasso came in a bottle in liquid form. I think it probably still does, but now you can get it in wadding form. This stuff used to be called Duraglit. I don't know whether Brasso bought out Duraglit or whatever, but either way it does the job well and it cleans up the rudder. Here I'm pushing the rudder into the tube until it sticks out above the deck. The end of the shaft is threaded, so I'm first of all fitting this nut. 
initially right down to the bottom of the thread. This will stop the rudder from falling out. I don't know if you've noticed, but the boat's been sat on a plastic box for a while to protect the propeller shaft. I've repositioned it so that the rudder is on the outside of the box. The only other part that I have is this pulley wheel. So why is it a pulley wheel? There's no sign of any sort of a tiller or locking mechanism for the rudder. I need the rudder to stay where I put it. I have no concept of what the original arrangement was because when I received the boat, the rudder was in the bottom of the boat. And when I looked at this sharp-edged pulley, I thought, well, I'll put an O-ring around it. That way you can grip it to rotate the rudder. And this seems to work OK. As I rotate the wheel, the rudder moves. Not unsurprisingly, but the rudder is a bit on the loose side and this would be no good because as the boat steamed through the water, the prop wash would just straighten out the rudder. But then I remembered, as I mentioned earlier, that the rudder shaft was bent. So I just re-bent the rudder like this and refitted it. And now there's considerable friction on the shaft inside the thick-walled tube, so the rudder stays where you put it. Simple and effective. Now I know that the rudder is going to work OK, I removed it because it's quite vulnerable sticking out the bottom of the boat. I've placed the hull back on one of the side benches in the workshop, and in the bag that's pressed against the hull is some sheet lead. I'll be using this for ballast, because I need to ballast the boat in water to see where the water line is. And that concludes this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.